Well, today we're gonna try to put together. Some no, 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 no! Time. Today, to today, today, and today we're gonna be putting together some of these quadcopters. <laughs> so that's a reference from from this guy's video we're watching up here on YouTube. Somehow, I don't know, Dad stumbled across this video and. It's about how to build $99 quadcopter FPV drones. So we went ahead and ordered all the parts off that video. And uh, we're going to try to put them together today. And what we had done in the beginning is, you've probably seen the video before, we took these little F-36 drones and hooked a wireless transmitter and camera up to them. And we've been flying them through these goggles that are you know, your first person view flying. So that was where we started. Uh, we can't even fly those too great, and we're going to go ahead and build these that are going to go like 10 times as fast and probably break 10 times as easy. So we got uh, our frames. Uh, most of the parts individually were pretty cheap. They're carbon fiber frames. We've got our speed controllers. They're about 30 bucks, maybe, $25. Then we got our mini wireless transmitters. We got some motors. We got some batteries. Uh, we got our power control boards. And we have uh, power control boards here, and then this is our actual um, flight controller board. And we're going to try to see if we can make these things work. Yeah. Alright, so when you're laying this out, you want to make sure... You're going to get two different kinds of motors. In the ones that we ordered, you can tell by... They have this black screw cap, and they also have the direction that they're going to turn on the motor. So these, they turn different directions. And one's counterclockwise, one's clockwise. In our sense, you want to have the clockwise one over here on the bottom right, and then the counterclockwise one over here, and it'll be the opposite up top. So you'll have uh, the counterclockwise one up on the top right, and then the clockwise up here on the left. And when you number them later, we're going to have to program these uh, with our speed controller. So you're going to have motor one, two, three, and four, I believe. No, I think it's one, two. Three, yeah, four. we'll have to go double check. We'll do that. And this is the front. This is the front of your frame on this particular frame. Yeah. And then when you get these motors, you'll get uh, four types, uh, two different types of screws. So you'll, if you can tell, you have a longer one here and a shorter one. In the video we're watching, it kind of says you want to use the shorter ones and put some Loctite on them. Uh, we don't have any Loctite at the moment, so we're just gonna leave. Them. Now we're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and snug them up there. But uh, we're gonna take them out later and put some Loctite in there. Mainly, so he states mainly because uh, when you are flying these things, there's a lot of torsion, so it's gonna be switching directions a lot. And then if it wrecks, uh, you can knock them loose pretty easy. Don't know the benefit of using the shorter screws versus the longer ones. It seemed like they weren't gonna hit anything when we put them in there, but we're just gonna. I'm gonna put the DRL League racing video on so to motivate us while we build this thing, right? This would be kind of cool. Let's see. Oh. What, what, wait, <laughs> and that's what Kenny was just talking about, right? There's probably going to be a lot of wrecking. Maybe we ought not watch it. <laughs> right, yeah. Alright, so uh, we got our motors on. All four of them on there. Like we said, we're going to take these off when we're done and get some Loctite so we can just continue to build. So now we're going to take our uh, speed controllers. We got a, a four in one speed controller. On these quadcopters, it's a little different. If you're familiar with like uh, RC planes or anything else, you always get one speed controller and that's all you have to do and you're good to go. But on this one, uh, you have four different motors. So we bought a four in one speed controller. You can get four individual speed controllers too, but that's not what we're too worried about right now. This is an important part. These are some of our screws and our standoffs. So you have a long screw with a couple of these spacers in here. And that's so we can put this speed controller on, and then we're going to stack it with our power uh, distribution board, and then our um, our flight control board. So, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, the wires to the uh, controller and the motors was kind of long. So we, we cut a good three inches off the controller side, and maybe a little, a half inch or something off the, the motors there. And we're getting ready to solder them together. After he trims them, we'll, we'll uh, tin them up with the solder and some paste, and then we'll put a uh, shrink wrap on there, and then we'll solder them together. 
We're getting there pretty close on the quadcopters. We ran into a couple issues yesterday. Number one, it was like 120 degrees here yesterday, so when we were soldering, the soldering gun kind of melted. Uh, it's kind of old, so anyways, we got a, had to go buy a new soldering gun, and we finally got these things all together. And just a couple things you might want to remember is when you get your motors on, you want to make sure they're going the right way. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to reprogram them later. And then if you can see down in between these boards, we had to uh, we had to shave off some of these spacers. The spacers in the video that we used, he had some screw-in spacers, so they just screwed into each other. These are a couple of nylon screws that go all the way through with these plastic spacers in between. So we had to shave some of those down to make sure we had room. You don't want anything touching in there. And then we put a little bit of hot glue over some of our solders on the back side of this. You can't see too well, but it's kind of like what we did here. Instead of electrical tape in this, we just put some hot glue over those tips to kind of save some weight. So then all we got to do now is we'll tape this down with electrical tape, these motor wires. We got to mount our camera in there. And then once we get our camera mounted, we got to figure out how we're going to get our receiver in here. This is our receiver that's going to go in, and we have two antennas off this receiver. So we got to figure out how we're going to mount those. From everything we've seen, they end up coming out of the back. So this might mount sideways like this and come out the back. So that's all we got to figure out. We got a, our remotes fairly programmed, ready for this. And then uh, we'll put the bodies on. And these are our camera mounts here, so we'll film that. And then we'll be good to go. And Velcro, we need some Velcro to Velcro the batteries down. These are going to go on top. Plug it back. Looking good. All right, so we we made some progress and we forgot to film some parts, so we're gonna try to catch you up. Finally, got these all together. Um, there was the the tricky parts you gotta get down is this stack. Uh, once you get all those soldered together, we had them soldered and wired, but we hadn't done a fitting, so we kind of messed ourselves up because the the wires come into our video receiver or video transmitter. On mine, they're pretty short because ideally you might want to have it sticking out this back hole so you can see the LED on the channel. Right now mine's up under this battery and then there's the antenna. So that still kind of worked. You also want to make sure that you get your USB port visible between all those wires while also getting these out of the way from your propellers. And then we got the upgraded camera on that model so we had to screw it in here and getting these walls on was a little difficult and then uh, you want to make sure that you give yourself enough room on these plugs this is a pro tip see how we kind of soldered ours backwards we should have soldered them the other way we weren't really thinking when we did that it was upside down and off the thing the, uh, the next thing you want to kind of make sure is you get your propellers on right so I haven't screwed any of these down tight but all these motors turn different directions so you have to make sure that the propeller is on the right direction for the motor that you're using. And then you can tighten those down. And then once you're at this point, you need to program it. And the programming part was a little bit difficult for us. Some pro tips that we learned is you got to flash it first. So you need to come over here to whatever you're using, beta flight or clean flight. You need to come over here. You need to check the baud rate. You need to check full chip erase. And then you need to check the version that you want to use. And then you hit load firmware. Once that loads, then you hit flash firmware. And that ought to get you going as long as you're showing connected and you have the right input here. So as long as you got the right input there, you get it. So then once you get it connected, you can come in here. You can calibrate your accelerometer. You can watch the dude's video, but the parts that ended up getting us was... Uh, you need to make sure you have this URAT3 port because that's what we soldered to on the flight control board. Under configuration, you need to make sure you have your yaw correctly. Ours was 90 degrees rotated, so we, we got that. Then the next important thing is to come down here to your receiver. We used uh, the serial base receiver and set it to iBus. So on our receiver, we're using one cable, and it's not plugged into the PPM port. It's plugged into the iBus port. Um, on, it's not the servo, but it's the, the other port that I don't remember the name off the top of my head. And then we don't have any GPS or anything, so we didn't use that. We didn't change any of this stuff over here. Uh, you don't have to do anything under battery. 
under PID tuning, we put it to 0.4, which means when you press the stick just a little bit, it's a, a real gradual uh, movement based off the scrap. So when you push it a little bit, you get a very little response. And then if you do a full stick, then you'll get the full, the farther out on the stick, you'll get more of a response. Uh, and then we really didn't change anything else there. Then the next part is on the receiver. If you set it to iBus, you should be able to turn this on and we'll go ahead and do it real quick. And you can see. So we're on here, so if I turn my sticks, you should see some sort of response here. Oh, my throttle sticks going off. Then you want to make sure your arm switch comes on. Which, if you see up here, it's this thing was important. Before we did this, we weren't ever seeing this arm switch, so that's important. And you want to make sure your auxiliary is hooked up if you're using a second switch. Now, you got to set this to arm, and you can leave it on aux 1, but you can't set anything else. We had set a fail safe up on here as well, which was causing it to go into fail safe mode at the same time as it armed, so we weren't ever getting the motors to turn. And then we went ahead and added an angle switch. So you have angle and horizon. Angle is going to be like a self-leveling mode. So if you push forward on the stick, if you hit forward on the stick and then let off the stick, the copter will come back to level. Whereas in not angle mode, you're in something called manual mode or rate mode. When you go forward on the stick, if you come back, it's just going to leave it forward. So if I went forward, it's just going to stay forward even if I'm off stick. I have to do the same motion on the opposite direction of the stick in order to get it back to neutral. So that one's kind of a real hard mode to get used to. And then, uh, so then that's our, our rate switch. And then other than that, you can come down here and you can see your motor. You can change your OSD, but we're not doing an OSD board, so we're kind of flat through there. And, uh, and other than that, you can see we got a gyro and accelerometer enabled. If you have the F3 Deluxe, you can get a barometer, and it might have a magnometer or something else, but we don't have those enabled. The other part that was kind of tricky for us is you couldn't see the motors turn, but you can come here and change the master. I'm not going to do that. You just need to make sure you got your understand the risks. Um, and once you check that, then you can move this master and those motors will start turning. And other than that, that's about it. How many hours you got on that? It's probably just taking like well, we spent a couple of days working on it, but we got distracted a lot during the day. The first day we were working on it, a good buddy of ours came over with his Mavic Pro, so we were flying that around for a few hours and exploring the town with that, and then we rode a dirt bike around, and then <laughs> we went and talked to some family, and the next day we got about the same way. We started and then got distracted, and then I kind of just came out here after work today and spent about another hour and a half and finally got these all going. We can and, test them out now. Yeah, we'll test them out. I'm going to tape, tape these up so you don't get them in the way of your propellers. Uh, so however you're going to end up doing that, I'm not sure how I'm going to get mine going. I might just do it like right there and right through this hole or something. And, and just hot glue them right there and leave it as that. So then we'll test it out. Uh, shot on first flight, so we'll plug it in. Make sure on our switches, you can't even turn this thing on. So I'll give you an example. If I got any of these switches down or my throttle up, it'll say place all switches in their up position and lower the throttle. So I gotta lower that and do that before anything turns on. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna plug this in. Beep. Come on. That thing beeped at me for some reason. Now I gotta arm it in order to actually fly it. So if I do that, I should be able to give it some gas. There we go. No! Rufus, get over here. And get your nose chopped off. So now, right now, it's in rate mode. So I'm not even giving it forward stick. I'm just off and it's going to try to go until I hold it there. So if that made any sense, I, I pushed it forward like that. And it's just going to hold that position until I correct it like those are still spinning so until I put it back to the right they're gonna keep spinning 
But then something's off in our gyro, I think, because if I go this switch down into self-level, we'll see if we can fly it. And I'll see if I can switch it over here to self-level mode. Getting farther and farther away. Alright, I went into self-level mode. So now, mine's kind of flying like the way we want it. See, I'm going right, and it's coming back to self-level. It's drifting a little bit. That thing's quick. It's way quicker than what we've been flying, bro. So my self-level mode works a little bit. That's okay, right? We could probably control that with our trim to get that to hover. That's, that's no no control right there. So that's okay. You know? Now we've got ours in angle mode. And what angle mode means is no matter what controls I put down on this controller, it's never going to rotate. If I was in manual mode and I put full stick, it would do a flip. So I'm not going to disarm it and put it back into rate mode or <laughs> yeah rate mode so in rate mode if you were to do full stick the thing would just rotate and do front flips until you went backwards so it's a little bit confusing if you're used to buying flying these store-bought drones like we are we got to get used to it so now we'll get dads out here and we'll see if we can get FPV mode <laughs> we're gonna wreck them first time probably on that one a couple of test flights here. I've flown around with two batteries and Dad's flown around a battery. We both wrecked it. I couldn't see any of the wrecks. I saw Dad's wreck and he, these things move pretty quick. And we're in some pretty good thick grass. So nothing's broke yet. Dad broke some of the hot glue off of his gun or his antenna. So let's see if we can fly some more here. If you saw it jump right there, because I put it in self-leveling mode. You can put it in rate mode. I was flying like that earlier. Is it? Hovering there? Yeah, kind of. It's moving. Can't you tell you're moving? No, because it's moving. going up and up and up. I'm looking at the sky that way. You gotta aim this thing down to the ground. Losing signal right there. <laughs> That's pretty fast. Things are moving, guys. <laughs>